Well, good morning, everybody. John Cullum here again. It's Tuesday, August 11th, and it's 150 days since uh, we have been asked to shelter in place. And um, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> um, hope everybody had a good Monday. And today is Tuesday. And uh, I'm looking forward to um, walking around Fitch Mountain today and maybe taking a swim at the pool. And uh, hopefully y'all will have a, a good day today. But let's get started with our daily devotional. If you have a book of common prayer, please turn to page 137. If you don't, sit back and enjoy. Uh, we're going to start reading from Psalm 51. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your eternal of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Uh, today's reading is from the Gospel of John. We're still in chapter 3. We're going to read the rest of the chapter today, verses 22 through 36. I'm taking today's reading from the New Revised Standard Version. <clears throat> John 3, 22 to 36. After this, Jesus and his disciples went into the Judean countryside, and he spent some time there with them and baptized. John also was baptizing at Anon, near Salim, because water was abundant there, and people kept coming and were being baptized. John, of course, had not yet been thrown into prison. Now a discussion about purification rose between John's disciples and a Jew. They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, the one who was with you across the Jordan to whom you testified, here he is baptizing, and all are going to him. John answered, No one can receive anything except what has been given from heaven. You yourselves are my witnesses that I said, I am not the Messiah, but I have been sent ahead of him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom, who stands and hears him, rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. For this reason, my joy has been fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is of the earth belongs to the earth and speaks about earthly things. The one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what, has, what he has seen and heard, yet no one accepts his testimony. Whoever has accepted his testimony has certified that this, God, has certified this that God is true. He whom God has sent speaks the words of God for he gives the Spirit without measure. The Father loves the Son and has placed all things in his hands. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever disobeys the Son will not see life, but must endure God's wrath. Here endeth the reading. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I've uh, identified with John a lot over my adult life. Sort of a messy, hairy kind of guy. I used to have a beard, a big beard. I remember in my early 20s, the church in Oakland that I used to attend asked me to play John the Baptist for the uh, Sunday school kids and um, of course I let my beard grow out a little bit and um, I had an old ratty wool sweater that was too big and the sleeves had stretched. I used to wear it when I would go river rafting and of course it would get wet and not dry properly and it was pretty ratty. Um, that and the fact that my beard was pretty big and um, I had an old Santa Claus costume from high school that had been through the ringer a few times at a few parties and uh, 
the wig on it just was sort of going everywhere. And so I put this wig on and this sweater and a big belt. And I went into, burst actually, burst into the Sunday school room yelling, prepare the way, prepare the way. And of course, to complete the picture, I had gummy worms to hand out to the kids. It was a lot of fun. But I identified with John more than just that, um, although the wilderness and the sort of scruffiness of John um, and I have always been um, similar. But that being said, uh, I really like this passage about John because this is John at his at his sort of acknowledging it's time to retire, and uh, it's it, it's a it's a great thing. The other, another thing about John. John's a rabbi. He's a teacher. Well, I'm a coach, and coaches are teachers. And um, coaches and teachers in general um, are their their whole job is to serve and teach and prepare their students or their players for life ahead. And this is sort of John's purpose. He's to prepare the way. He's to teach people to repent, to change, get ready, and. Um, it's it's really kind of nice at this point where it's almost like graduation. Jesus has, has got his thing going, and it's time for Jesus to increase and John to decrease. It's like at the end of a season when a coach says goodbye to his players and says, go forth. You know, I've taught you everything I can in the amount of time you've given me. Go forth and, and take with it. Take with you what I've offered and, and do well with it. And it's a really rewarding feeling. Um, to have that. And um, John, you know, John in his, in this reading says, I'm fulfilled. You know, it's time for him to be bigger and me to be lesser. Uh, He must increase and I must decrease. And just before that, he says, for this reason, my joy has been fulfilled. My joy has been fulfilled. John's ready for retirement, although we know later on he um, gets arrested and gets beheaded. Not really a great retirement, but I sort of like the, like this vision. Um, John pulls up a chair on the river. He's got a fishing pole and a six-pack, and and his, he's fulfilled. He's done his duty. He's he's finished his calling, and um, and I'm happy for John in, in this passage, and um And I hope you are too. Amen. And now if you go back to your prayer book, if you have one, page 392 for our prayers of the people. Form 6. And let's begin here. Oh, yeah. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation, and for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth, for all bishops, ministers, and priests, for all who serve God in his church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially today we pray for Donna, Autumn, Bobby and Jen, Catherine, Daisy, Deborah, David, Doug, Joan, Tristan, Leah, Margie, Michael, Patricia, Randy, Richard, Robin, Sherry, Steve, Suzanne and Richard, 
Sylvan, Tammy, Marjorie, Natalio, John, Arnold and Bob Santucci, Elaine Rock, Yvonne Milligan, David Hutchings, Rafael Perez, Marion and Ron Nearsessian, Reverend George and Barbara Hunt, Susan and Dan Hall, Paul Motter, Elizabeth and James Gore, Opal and Jacob, and Kristen Foster. Also, we pray in our congressional cycle of prayers for St. Andrews in the Highlands in Antelope, Trinity Cathedral in Sacramento, and Good Shepherd in Cloverdale. Please, Annie, please add any of your own petitions here. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. Please add your own thanksgivings, and I would like to thank God for the um, website uh, that I mentioned yesterday uh, about um, the uh, sermons that you can get, or not sermons, I, yesterday, I'm sorry, uh, for the um, Bible, uh, oh, what is it, I'm sorry, I thought I had it here. BibleGateway.com, where you get all the various translations of the Bible, which I enjoyed using this morning. We exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray also for those who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Please add your own petitions. Today I would like to pray for the soul of Edward R. Sims. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. <coughs> Excuse me. And now, uh, if you'll pray with me the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And the closing colic for today, Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And that's the Monday, the Tuesday morning devotional. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you all go out and have a great day. I hope the sun comes out soon because I want to go to the pool. And go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.